In this experiment, we're going to be looking at the IV characteristics of a diode, which is this very small component up here, which I've just got mounted in this component holder. Now, when it's set up, it's going to be connected in series with another resistor. And this just means it limits the total current, which is actually going to be flowing through this, and that stops it overheating. And so the first thing I'm going to do, in this case, I'm using my power supply, my variable power supply. I've got an ammeter as well. So if I just turn that on, the first thing I'm going to do is just check that this is working. So I'm going to plug it into the DC terminals down here. Uh, so we can see that this is a fairly standard kind of setup for uh, something like this. I'm going to put that in there. And now if I turn that up, we can see that, um, well, actually nothing's happening. <laughs> That's maybe a good thing. Um, the second thing I'm going to be doing is adding in my voltmeter. So again, just attaching it across the terminals of this diode. And if I do that, and maybe just get some of these wires out of the way, um, when that's turned on, we have some value. So that all looks good. So this is very much the setup. We have an ammeter in series with the diode and we have the voltmeter connected up just over the diode. It's not connected up over the diode and the resistor, it's only across the diode, and that's really important. So I think now we're ready to take some data. So initially, with the power supply turned off, we have zero volts and zero current. When we've got negative two volts, or a value quite close to that, we have a current of zero. I'm now going to do the same going to negative four. And zero. About negative six and zero. You can guess it now, we're gonna to go to negative eight. and zero, and finally we're gonna go down to negative 10 or minus 10, and again, the value is zero, which is good, it should be doing that. I'm gonna turn this back down to zero, and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to swap the connection over. Now, when I do that, in terms of the range of results that we're going to be taking, what I can do very quickly is a bit of a preliminary experiment. So if I just turn this up to the max, we can actually see the maximum value is less than one volt. So we can't keep going up at two volt intervals. So what we can do though, is we can maybe take some data over a narrow range of potential differences and see how that affects the current. So let's move this maybe to um, this value here, 0 0.57, and we have a current of zero. 0 0.75 and it's sort of fluctuating between 0 0.03 and 0 0.04 so you decide which measurement uh, you want to take but they're going to move it a little bit we've got 0 0.79 and that's between 0 0.09 and 0 0.10 0 0.82 and that value is about 0 0.18 uh, we've got 0 0.85 and 0 0.35 or 36 or 37. Again, you can pause the video and take a good value for that. At 0 0.91, we've got 0 0.98 or 99. And it's pretty much maxed out now at 0 0.92, and that's about 1.15. So I'm going to turn it down there. Actually, you might notice... Um, I've actually overheated <laughs> that and it's actually starting to smoke. So when we had quite a high, whew, when we had quite a high current, we actually got um, too high a current going through that resistor, which is actually overheated. So hopefully now we have some data, which we can now uh, put onto our graph, where we're going to have the current on the Y axis and the potential difference of the voltage on the X axis for both positive and negative values.